All right. So today is going to be part two of, um, of basically understanding the times that we're in, right? So understanding Proverbs 10, 5 says, understand or know the season you're in and a wise man or woman you will be, right? So that means we need to be um, um, uh, 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 gentle as doves, right? But smart as serpents. Um, or sharp like serpents. We need to understand what we're dealing with in this time. It doesn't mean that we're fearful. It doesn't mean that we um, kind of fall out of that vibration, which we talked about on Saturday, the vibration of heaven. We can still uh, walk through the, uh, the, the shadow in the shadows of the valley of death, but we fear no evil, right? So again, let's stay rooted in the truth. Let's stay rooted in in God, let's say, stay rooted in love and in, in gentleness, goodness, kindness. Let's stay in that vibration of heaven as we study and we look at what today we're going to go through to the past of, of how did we get to the situation we're in in the world today. All right. So last week we talked about what is the situation in the world right now today. And of course, there's there wasn't enough time to go through everything that's going on right now. Um, but I started sharing some videos of information of really the depth of evil that's happening in the world today. And, and the prophets are saying, we are going to be shocked at the depth of evil that is happening in the world today. We're going to be astounded of what really is happening. Um, and it's a matter of awakening, right? So that, that's the term that's being used right now is awakening and seeing what really is going on. So last week we talked about the world banking system is so evil and uh, they're using our money in our bank accounts to fund their evil agendas. Uh, we talked about the entertainment industry. We talked about, you know, business industry and we talked about the different stakeholders and different, um, like the different uh, organizations and people that are leading this right now. All right. So um, uh, th that kind of established, you know, really in a summary of what's going on today right and i if i i say we all need to on our own stay informed we need to um we need to understand the truth of what's going on so that we are not easily fooled right and that's what's happening right now a lot of people are being easily fooled um you know through the media through the government and so on and so on all right so today we're going to look at now the past. How did we get here, right? Now, so we it, that some of it's just fascinating knowledge, which I find it fascinating. <laughs> um, um, some so some of it's just fascinating knowledge, but a lot of it is about historical cycles and patterns, right? Um, and we're going to look at it from uh, we're going to take three different perspectives, looking at historical cycles and patterns so that we can say, oh my goodness, um, right, I see the pattern, I see the pattern, I see the pattern, and now we're in this um, part of the pattern, the repeat of the pattern or the cycle, and it, then it, everything today will kind of make sense, right, and, and again, that's, that's, that's knowledge, and with knowledge, there's power. All right, so let's um, all right, uh, let's see here. Yeah, so let's start with, let's look at, um, which will I choose? I'll just choose, a, let's just choose the biblical perspective first, okay? So um, there's a term called dispensations. Uh, dispensation means when a system or, a, 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 um, or a, um, you know, a group of people or, um, or something big is dispensed of. It's gotten rid of, right? Um, so, you know, a hospital that has an old archaic, uh, you know, you know, um, system for storing records, right? And then they transition to maybe, maybe that was all pen and paper, but then they transition to the, to everything being stored on computer, you know, so they, it was a dispensation of the old written system, right? Um, but in biblical terms, a dispensation is when um, basically God dispenses of, uh, people even, uh, you know, take Noah, the flood with Noah, uh, or, or dispenses of, a, a mindset or a sin or something like that. So that's what dispensation means. All right. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to use the, uh, an electronic whiteboard today. 
I think that will be easy for every, easier for everybody to see. All right, so I'm gonna outline um, these different cycles of dispensation. Uh, well, there'll be rise to, uh, rise to prosperity and then a dispensation, another rise to power and another dispensation. So let's go through them. Uh, and I'll just map them out. You got, you'll all know this actually once, once I outline this all. All right. So let's, um, let's start with Adam and Eve. Let's just start at the beginning. Right. Uh, so here we are. So we have, um, I'm going to type in, we have Adam and Eve. All right. All right. So they had, they were, you know, in their prime right? They were in the Garden of Eden. Everything was going wonderfully. They walked hand in hand, face to face with God every single day. They had more than enough to eat. They didn't have to work. Everything was provided for them and everything was lovely. Oops, I started trying. Now, then what happened is they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which was the one thing they were not to do, right? So then there was a fall, right? All right, so uh, that is called, we'll call that the fall. All right. So then we have, um, then we have Noah, right? So uh, in the time of Noah, where's my pen here? This whiteboard thing is really cool. All right, and you know, um, um, all right, so uh, yeah, so you know, I'm not going to go into great detail uh, about the individual stories, but uh, uh, God's kingdom rose. It was going, it was very prosperous, very strong, and then all of a sudden there was a decline as people started to turn away from God, and people was, God was, you know, angry with them. Uh, uh, there was so much, so much sin in the world, and He said, "That's it." I'm wiping out everything and Noah is my only righteous one. And so I'm going, he's going to, um, uh, I'm going to save him and his family. He's going to save some animals and they're going to carry through to the next uh, cycle. Uh, but meanwhile, everybody else uh, was killed in the, the flood. All right. Next cycle, right? So Noah's family starts to repopulate the world and everything's going super well. There's prosperity. Everybody's following God. And, um, oh, actually, let me finish this off here. I mean, this is, I'm going to put the era, I'm going to, oops, Nimrod. So, um, uh, so, so in here is, um, uh, uh, just to, to clarify who Nimrod is, uh, so he's the uh, grandson of um, Noah, and I'm going to come back because this is going to be a third aspect of um, that we look at at historical cycles, but basically Nimrod was the one who, uh, under his reign, built the Tower of Babel. And um, he also, his family line established the uh, caste system, which uh, established that the, uh, the lightest skinned people are the most superior and going down, 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 down to the darkest skinned people are the least um, uh, important or valued, right? It was Nimrod's people that, estab Nimrod that established that. And we'll get into more detail in that uh, in a minute or in a bit. But anyway, so in Nimrod's time, yeah, everybody, everybody was thriving, following God. But then Nimrod built the Tower of Babel. Um, and uh, and then what happened? Well, everyone was scattered to the ends of the earth. Their um, uh, languages were confused. They're all of a sudden speaking different languages. And everything was in chaos and a mess. So we have Babel, the Tower of Babel, right? All right, and uh, they built the tower because it was out of pride, basically, to say we're closer to God, right? So they built it high to show that they were closer. Uh, they were a people that were closer to God than anyone else. All right, and they wanted to show it and prove it to everybody. All right, let's move on. Next one is um, Abraham. All right, Abraham. 
All right. So again, Abraham, we know him to be the father of nations. All right. Um, uh, he's in his prime. Everybody's going well. Everybody's following God. Everybody's prospering. But then there was famine in the land. And so Abraham decided, let's move to Egypt uh, where there, you know, there's no famine, right? There's, there's food to eat. So he moved all his people out of the land where God had, that God had given him or asked him to, to stay. And he went to Egypt and well, what happened? Uh, they were captured. I'm really, really going through and summarizing here guys and not getting into detail, but, uh, bottom line is they were taken into captivity in Egypt. All right. Um, let's look at the next one. Now we have the time of Moses. All right. So here we are. Moses leads them out of captivity. They're rising up. Everything's going well. They've moved into the promised land the, where the grapes were so big, it took two men and a pole to carry one bunch of grapes, right? Everything was lovely. But then every, people started turning away from God and it kept deteriorating and deteriorating. And we have another <laughs> uh, dispensation. And this is the, um, I need to add in here. I need to, where do I, there we go, I'll do this. This is the time of Jesus, all right? Where Jesus uh, was, uh, the Messiah uh, was rejected. All right, that's the fall here. Jesus was rejected. In fact, he was killed, the most horrific death ever. All right, um, so that was the fall there. Then, okay, now we're, we're talking about the times we're in now. Uh, where's my line? Here we are. All right. All right, but then we have the apostles, right? The apostles, now they're bringing revival. Uh, oh, that's not what I wanted. Hold on. I want this one. There we go. Right? So the apostles start bringing revival. By the thousands, people are turning to God, right? And the church is thriving. It's doing really well. It's growing rapidly. Um, <laughs> but now, this is the time we're, we're, we're in now. We're in the kind of the, well... We're just about to the bottom of it now. Um, so I need to write in here, the apostles. All right. Um, so the downfall uh, here is apostasy, uh, which is the rejection, uh, um, uh, the rejection of the church, right? Uh, a rejection of Christianity. Um, and, and this is where we're at now. We're not at the bottom yet, actually, maybe. So I should, uh, hold on. I should just take out the bottom arrow. I'll do this. So we're here. <laughs> All right. I'm not sure how far we are down. Um, but this is where, guys, this is where the Seven Mountains Prophecy comes in. All right. Um, Seven Mountains Prophecy, remember, uh, uh, God is wiping out all the evil on the earth, right? Just like he did here, just like he did here, right? Um, and here, you know, he promised, I'm not going to wipe everybody out after the flood. That was the meaning of the rainbow. But instead, he scattered them and confused them, okay? Um, they weren't obeying him here. Okay, into captivity you go, uh, right? Weren't obeying him here. Uh, or the Messiah was, um, uh, Jesus had to die for us there uh apostasy we're all being persecuted uh uh for our faith all right um so uh seven social mountains god says i'm wiping out all of the evil on the earth and so what he's doing is he's exposing them right they're being exposed um uh you know it, on all the seven social mountains and they're being either convicted and put in jail some of them are committing suicide. Some of them are losing their, uh, having to step down from their jobs or their government positions and, and so on and so on. But everything's being exposed. It's like, it's like, it's like if there were a bunch of rocks around the earth and God's picked up those rocks and all those creepy crawly yucky bugs that are underneath are like, ah, 
the you know the lights being shot on them and they're like ah, and they're running and trying to trying to get away right he's exposing them all all right that, that this is where we're at now um i'll go i'll finish uh i need to pick a different color here maybe yeah let's pick uh let's pick orange because i like orange <laughs> all right so here we go so um so here we go this is future right near near future all right all right um now um, do i want to um not going to get into debating anything right now we're not gonna, that's not the purpose of right now uh but this is what is forecasted in the bible all right here we have this is going to be the season of tribulation all right tribulation and um stay orange uh and sorry at the end of tribulation will be um complete worship of the dragon all right and here we have uh the messiah it says he will reign on the earth uh and then the final fall is the people will turn away in anger. All right. Uh, and then that's it. There we are. Now, um, again, not getting into debate on this right now, but it is widely believed that uh, I'm in orange. I'm going to switch to red. Here we are. All right, uh, so guess what this is? <laughs> All right, uh, widely believe that the rapture happens in, in this area here. And uh, Armageddon. I think that's two g's two d's armageddon happens there all right um all right so there's kind of a timeline so the whole idea here is look at the cycles right there's there was a rise um of people following god there was a time of prosperity and thriving and then there was a fall as people turned away from god uh, followed by um, a consequence or a dispensation then there was another rise right then a time of, of great prosperity where everyone was honoring and following god and then people turned away from god and a fall and another consequence or dispensation you see the patterns happening there and right now in the world i mean that's why we talked last week about what the situation in the world right now the the amount of sin that's happening that we don't see like it's uh, well we're seeing it more and more it's being exposed but there's way more to be exposed that we're that even the most awakened people aren't aware of yet uh, um but it's all coming uh, it's almost weekly now almost daily now uh things are being exposed all right so the whole idea here cycles 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 and patterns right each one has a different look or flavor or you know different people involved different situations but there are cycles all right um, any questions on that part before I go on? I just wanted to mention that I, I believe we can only see part of your whiteboard screen. Um, we can see uh, up to Moses, I think, does it say Moses and the apostles? Okay. But we can't see before that. Oh, you can't see before that? No. Oh, goodness. Okay. I thought wrong with my phone I was trying to figure it out but then I saw you start drawing between like just just before the apostles there okay just so you, okay um how can I let me let me see what I can do really quick um 
let me let me try this. I'm gonna do a screenshot. Um, okay, and I'm going to close the whiteboard, share screen. Um, oh, hold on. I need to open that screenshot. Oh goodness, it didn't, I think my screenshot didn't work. It didn't take a second here. Um, okay, my screenshot didn't work. It didn't take, I can't show it. Oh, hold on. Yes, it did. There it is. Awesome. All right, open it up. All right, let me share that this way. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, yeah. good. All right, so just, just a quick, I think I kind of explained it, I think well enough, but you, you can see how, yeah, there was a rise, time of high, great prosperity, then the fall, right? Another one, a rise up in power, uh, time of great prosperity and then people turned away from god then there was a flood you can see the cycles happening there right mm -hmm. okay awesome okay um awesome so on this we can see where we're like we're not back here we're not even here we're not even here we're not even we're well we're here right so we're well into end times right and um you know, so we can see there's hope in that. Let's let's see the hope in this that my times are tough and they're gonna get worse, right? But but uh, but but we have God, right? And uh, you know, Noah rescued. Uh, sorry, God rescued Noah. Had a way out for him. He had a way out for Adam and Eve. And Jesus provides a way out for all of us. And now, of course, we have a blueprint for King Solomon Kingdom incubators, which is a way out for us. Um, you know. So, um, all right, so I just, you know, kind of take that in, be encouraged that we're almost near the end, uh, uh, but know that we're headed towards another, you know, another dispensation. Uh, but thank, thank uh, Jesus that, uh, <laughs> you know, the, 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 the blood is on our doorposts, right? Mm -hmm. All right, okay. Mm -hmm. so, going to stop share that and let's go back to the whiteboard now uh let me see here uh i want to be able to share this so that you can see um um all right maybe i i will draw more to the right of the of the whiteboard so that it makes sure everybody can see what i'm drawing okay so we're going to talk now, let's look at from a world perspective, from a historical perspective. Uh, yes, what we just talked about was history. It was true and all, real and all that stuff. But um, from a non-biblical perspective, um, let's talk about the rise and falls of nations or, you know, yeah, basically they're nations. So you know, think in the past, we had the rise and fall of, of, of Israel in King Solomon's day. He reigned for 40 years, only, only four. Well, 40 is a long time. For, for being a king, but um, but still it was is 40 years uh, where there was a rise, a time of prosperity. Then he started uh, marrying the, the women of other um, religions and uh, um, family lines. And there was a fall, right? Same kind of, you know, um, uh, rise and fall of an empire. I'm gonna call them empires uh, or you, we could use the word nations as well. Then there was the Egyptian empire was the strongest in the world uh, at one time. There was the Roman empire, right? Rose up and then fell. The, uh, the, um, uh, and then the Dutch empire, let's, we're gonna, I'm gonna take it us now to the more recent history, right? Um, um, and I will use, uh, let's pick orange for Dutch right? The Netherlands. And I'll start drawing out here, probably. Yeah, about here. All right. So um, 
uh, so the Dutch Empire rose up to prominence in the world, right? And then there was a time of great prosperity, oops, where they reigned and they were the dominant empire or nation in the world, right? Um, but then there was a fall, like every other cycle, right? All right. Um, then we're going to switch colors to, um, let's go to red for the British Empire because uh, they do have red in their flag. Uh, the British Empire started to rise to prominence during the fall of the Dutch uh, uh, empirical um, power. There was a transition of power here and the British kept rising. They became the dominant nation of the world. All right. But like every other nation that had or empire that has been in power, they uh, they fell, all right? Um, and then most recently, the United States started to become more powerful as Britain was uh, declining in power. They rose up and they were uh, in a time of great power. And now they are, oops, I'm at the end of my, they're falling. Okay, let's let's break this down a little bit, okay? Um, and it goes back beyond that. I picked this recent, more recent history, uh, most be because it's what I know a little bit more about. Um, and so I feel comfortable speaking about it, um, but also it's a little more real for us uh, for, right, for today's time. So um, uh, let me just pick another color. Uh, let's pick black. There we go. All right. So um, what are the characteristics? So how can we tell? Uh, oh, actually, for right now, where, where are we at right now? We're right about here, right? Not the complete fall of the United States, but the United States is struggling, all right? Uh, but let's let's talk first of all about what are the characteristics of a nation or an empire that's on the rise? What does it look like when they're in prosperity? And what does it look like when they're coming down? And what does that transition point look like, okay, right? And now, and let's, as I'm explaining these things, think about where we are today. Right. And, and so that so we can understand, oh, I see where we are today. Oh, and I see where we're heading. OK, so then I can kind of think, knowing these cycles have been going on since the beginning of time, um, what will happen next so we can prepare. Right. Right. Because it says be uh, um, uh, as sharp as serpents and gentle as doves. All right. So here we go. Um, symptoms of um, I'm going to compare this actually to lions in a pack, right? So you think of a lion, there's a king, a lion king, there's a, there's the head of the pack, right? There's other males in the pack, but uh, they submit to the, the lion king because he's the uh, the best hunter. He's the, the, the strongest, like physically. Um, uh, he's the wisest. He asserts his authority uh, with a greater authority. And um, um, so, it, but in a, uh, every Lion King, uh, so they start as a baby, of course, they're nurtured and cared for. They grow in, in physical stature. They grow in wisdom and hunting prowess, um, leadership prowess, right? And, and what happens is a lion then, uh, that young lion will then challenge the lion, the existing Lion King when he sees that the existing Lion King is aging out, he's getting weaker. Maybe he's losing his vision. He definitely can't hunt like he used to. His body is deteriorating. At the right moment, uh, when the new uh, incoming Lion King uh, knows his, he's ready to leave, right? Um, at the and when he sees that the existing, the old Lion King is at a um, a weak enough point that he can take this King Lion, old Lion King out, then he will challenge in, in uh, uh, the old Lion King for a fight, right? Um, and uh, they will battle, they literally battle, scratch, claw, bite, whatever. And, you know, either the old Lion King dies or um, he's defeated. And uh, so what happens is the new Lion King takes leadership in the Lion Pack and the old Lion King leaves the pack, right? That's just the way it works. Then the old Lion King must leave because if, if he stayed, 
uh, it, it usurps, it, it will undermine uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the leadership within the pack, right? Uh, so the old Lion King goes and generally when they're on their own, they, they eventually die. All right, so the same with the, the rise and fall of a nation, right? So there is a, a, new, a new, new lion in town, <laughs> right? Uh, so they start to build strong. So what does this look? They're building economies, right? Think of the social mountains. They have, uh, they have a strong economic power, means, means banking systems, business systems, um, uh, trade routes. They've established wise and prosperous trade routes, all right? And they've uh, managed their money well, all right? Uh, another thing, so here we are, we're coming up, we're getting stronger. Uh, they develop strong militaries, all right, uh, to defend uh, the, uh, their country or even attack other countries, right? And they, uh, you know, they've developed really good education systems, right? They've, tr they've educated their people well so that, um, 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 sorry, I just another thought came into my mind here. Uh, they're, they're, they're educating well uh, so that they've got um, lots of people serving within the country and, um, and they've got a common mission that they're all sold out to. There's no division in amongst the people, right? They're all sold out for this vision and, and the mission of the country. Um, and another characteristic that they all have is a really strong, charismatic, wise, um, a leader that knows how to communicate well um, and, and that the people say, yes, I want to follow this person, right? Um, so uh, there's other things. There's established transportation networks within the country. Um, yeah, and, and so you, you see where I'm going with this, all right? Um, so they rise to such a level of power like the lions, they challenge the existing, uh, you know, lion king, if you will. Uh, so let's let's go to here. When Britain, uh, when when the Dutch uh, when, uh, started to lose their um, uh, um, power, if you will, uh, and strength, um, the British were rising up. Right now, what happens here? What happens here? Uh, um, there is a I'll do it purple. There is a war right? Oops. There's a transition point, a changing of the guard, just like the lions. The lions have to fight. The new young lion has to fight to take over power and prove their strength, prove their military, in a country sense, uh, prove their military strength, their economic strength, that they've got lots of people uh, behind them, right? Um, uh, that are willing to fight and they're a united country, right? There's a battle that takes place. And um, so, um, you know, um, uh, I believe in this case, this was the World, World War I or World War II, something like that. I believe that's the timeline we're looking at here. Not quite sure on that one, but, um, um, but after that, it, Britain was established. No, sorry, that was uh, before World War I and World War II. All right. Um, so Britain came out on top, right? So here they are, they had built up a uh, strong military, uh, strong education system, so on and so on. There was a time of great prosperity um, and Britain then expanded their network, right? They expanded into um, uh, like India, trade routes to India, trade routes in Africa. And there, yes, um, this is when a lot of uh, the um, evil was happening. Uh, not all of this takeover of power was good, uh, but uh, we're just not going to go there right now, uh, right? Uh, but um, uh, um, yeah, so they had, uh, when you think of the British Commonwealth, I mean, Canada is considered part of the British Commonwealth. Um, the, the British Indies, the, the, there's, there's all over the world uh, uh, countries that are still part of the British Commonwealth. All right, so that's what Britain did. Now, like every cycle, right, they started to decline. Now, we talked about what are the symptoms when a country is on the rise, right? What does a country look like? What are the, what, what, do, what, what do we look for for countries that are on the rise? And what do we look for when countries are in um, uh, decline, right? Well, uh, it's the opposite 
<laughs> of the rise, right? It's the opposite, okay? So the people are in disunity. So there's generally civil wars happening. There's demonstrations, riots, um, you know, the people, there's division in amongst the people. And generally there's a left and a right, you know, uh, 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 in pol political terms it would be the right and the left uh, political parties. Um, uh, there's, there's unrest, there's anger uh, 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 within a country. That's a sign that a country is in decline, that they're divided, their people are divided. Politically, socially, they're divided, all right? Um, education systems decline, all right? Think about your own country right now. What state is your country in? Um, uh, education systems are declining. Uh, There's the quality of education. Um, what else? Uh, militaries are, are 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 depleting. They don't have the numbers. They don't have the the uh, weaponry, the ammunition, and so on. Or they don't have the vantage points anymore. They don't have military bases in strategic places anymore. Um, uh, what else? Oh, economic decline. They are there's they're in recession, in depression. Uh, or uh, stagnation uh, uh, economically, they're in decline. Okay, guys, where are we at right now? Where are we at right now? And globally, right now, there is, uh, how do I put this? I don't wanna give it away. <laughs> I, I think everybody sees where this is going, but my question is going to be, which country do you think is the next one and let me draw it i'll draw it in black because it's a neutral uh color uh which country has been rising up and will take power in the world which country right now shows the signs of economic power of military power of numbers of people like great numbers of people. I'm gonna, that, I'll put that out there. Which country do you guys see? China. China. <laughs> China, absolutely. They've been building for a while, right? We've seen it, right? But we didn't really quite understand it in the context of rises and falls of empires, right? Um, this is the direction we're going. Now let's look at this biblically, right? And, and I don't, uh, sorry, I don't have the exact scripture on me right now, but it talks about the rise of power of the great dragon from the east. My goodness. <laughs> Who is the great uh, uh, dragon in the east? It's China, right? This is what's going to come to pass. And China will be uh, at the peak. Uh, let's go back. Let's, if I could take a template, right? Let me look at the last, let's, I'll pull up the last whiteboard. I think I can do that. Let me just see. Uh, oh yes, I can. Nope, that's not the one. Um, okay, let me see. I'm gonna remove this whiteboard. Hold on one second. How do I remove this? Close this whiteboard. See if I can open the last one. Yes, I can. There we go. Right, so here's the one we just finished about biblical, the biblical cycles of history, rises and falls, right? Um, um, where was I gonna go with this? Right, uh, so remember, we're right here. Uh, there we go. We're right about here right now, it appears. We can use our wisdom, all right? And we're right about that, if, you, if, I, could, if I could take the last whiteboard and put it on top of this one, right? The, let's remember the United States, um, let me go to blue, because I did United States in blue. Remember United States was uh, here. There we go, okay. And China, which I did in black on the last one, I'll do it in red in this one. Uh, China has been rising up, right? And, Look at look at the look at how that look at the tribulation. It's the same cycle, the same arc, the same rise to power. It, for China, it matches with the tribulation. 
Isn't that interesting? We kind of know based on China's leadership uh, what China ruling the world is going to look like, right? We know what that's going to look like. Digital, we talked about that last week, like digital ID, um, uh, you know, uh, you'll own nothing uh, and you'll be happy. Well, I don't know if we'll be happy or not, but they, they want us to think that we're going to be happy about it. Um, so you see, right, if we lay out on top, interesting, kind of a perfect storm right now. Uh, I'll go back to uh, Black. Right now, we're in this perfect storm of a dispensation, the timing of a dispensation and a timing of a rise and fall of, uh, of empirical power, all right? Um, and then look, at, even like this is proof. This is proof. Uh, I need red again. Uh, red, right? I'll just continue this, right? What's the fall from tribulation? or the period of tribulation is complete worship of the dragon, right? It matches, right? So, okay. So let's use our wisdom here. Like let, let, we've taken the, let's take the knowledge we've just learned. Let's apply wisdom. Um, you know, I, I, and I will post some, uh, keep posting some more videos about the current world situation. Uh, so everyone's informed, but one of them, uh, maybe I'll post that this week or maybe I'll post that one today, is the Arctic Circle uh, is believed, well, between the uh, South China Sea and the Arctic Circle are hot spots, well, other than Russia, Ukraine, but the, uh, uh, the South China Sea and the Arctic Circle is where all the military forces for the big powers of the world right now, all the young lions are, are getting ready to fight in those two spots, right? There are battleships in the South China Sea um, there and there's just political tensions. Uh, you know, uh, I think the Secretary of State or, or Pelosi from um, the United States went to visit Taiwan uh, just this past week and China just jumped all over that and said, you know, uh, what are you doing? Taiwan is ours. So anyways, big kind of media war, political war there. Uh, but anyways, there's all kinds of warships in the South China Sea. But let's look at the Arctic Circle. That's really where I believe it's going to go down based on the evidence I'm seeing. Um, let me make a note of that to post the video about the Arctic, Arctic War. Um, so there are uh, I think it's six countries that um, have land inside the Arctic Circle around the North Pole. Um, that's uh, Canada, the United States, uh, Russia, um, uh, and um, uh, Norway. Oh, goodness. I think China's in there as well. I can't remember. Anyway, all of them have been beefing up uh, and building more and more bases in the Arctic Circle uh, over the last five years or more, maybe a bit more years, right? So this, the rising up, this, they're, they're building up the, all these, uh, you know, they're building up their powers. Um, and I'll send the video out. It's, it's quite interesting um, about how these countries have beefed up their military presence up there. And most believe, and I believe that's where the next war is gonna happen is in the Arctic Circle. Uh, and and we're, so we're talking a world war uh, there. And uh, again, remember, not fear mongering. We're just being wise uh, and knowing what's going down so that we can govern ourselves today to plan for our future for our children, right? All right. So um, do I want to go any more here? Okay, let's see any questions, comments of anything so far. All right. I, I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, you know, some other symptoms of a decline uh, uh, in an economy is food shortages. That's an, that's another. People are are starving, going hungry. Um, just go through my notes, make sure I covered everything. Um, okay. Oh, uh, just some more news of this current state of affairs. Uh, I mean, this, I, it's not news. This is, was, I think, two weeks ago. Russia formed an alliance with Turkey and Iran, right? They're beefing up, getting ready for war. 
um, uh, everybody's starting to take sides, right? They're all starting to uh, align and, and build up their forces. Um, okay, let me just, um, if you do have a common rating, just unmute and speak up, but um, I just want to, um, let's see here. Okay, yeah, um, some more signs. Oh, that's getting more into the present. Uh, I'll I'll save that for the summary. I'll save that for the summary. Let's go now uh, to the to a third way. So now we've looked at the biblical way. So on this this um, uh, whiteboard, the biblical cycles of history that brought us to today, right? Uh, and understanding where we're at in the cycle. Now let me close this one, and then we looked at the. Um, uh, the empirical or the, the like the nation um, uh, um, rises to like uh, rises to power and downfall. So we have the Dutch. Well, we talked about the the King Solomon, the Israelite uh, Empire, then the Egyptian Empire, Roman Empire. Then we talked more recently the Dutch Empire that uh, came and went. The British Empire came and went. The American empire came and now is on its way out. And we are, I think it's fairly obvious, China is the new young lion that will, uh, and there will be some sort of a conflict in some way where China will take over. All right. So those are two ways of looking at history to get us where we are today and gives us a glimpse into the future, all right, which we're getting to. Um, but now let me close this one. Um, I'm going to start another whiteboard. Now we're going to talk from just a different kind of perspective of what happened in the past to get us where we are today, again, so we understand how to govern ourselves today to set up for our children tomorrow. Um, how do I want to do this? Um, let's pick another color. Let's pick uh, green. We haven't done green yet. Okay. Um, uh, how do I want to draw this? Let's draw it this way. This is the line. Oh, hold on. You guys can't see it on that side of the whiteboard. Let me get rid of that. I'll draw it this side here. Okay. Oh, <laughs> sorry guys. All right, we want green. Green. There we go. Okay, here we are. This is uh, this is going to be the line of of Jacob or Israel. Okay, and uh, we'll do Esau. Let's do him uh, black. Yeah, bad guys are black, and that is the line of Esau. All right, let's just indulge me in a bit of history to get us to today. All right, um, so this is, uh, here we are, uh, Jacob, who was renamed uh, Israel by God, and down here we have uh, Esau. All right, okay, so Jacob and Esau were twin brothers. Uh, it, this is a battle of good and evil, right? Uh, I'm not saying Jacob was entirely good. We know that he wasn't because he plotted and conspired to uh, uh, gain the birthright from Esau. Uh, he had definitely some sin in him, but um, Jacob and Esau, even in the womb, battled for power. Who would come out first? They, right? they were battling constantly. And even um, uh, when they were, you know, pardon the gra <laughs> graphicness of this, but, um, you know, um, uh, 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 Jacob was to come out first, right? Like, but Esau, it says in the Bible, kind of stuck his hand out, as to, in other words, to claim, no, I'm going to be first. So kind of, kind of stuck his hand out, and the midwife tied a ribbon around that hand uh, to determine that that was the firstborn. But uh, then uh, Jacob actually was first fully born, and then of course Esau. 
Um, so you see with the battle for, for power, the battle for power. And when we've been talking about history, the battle for power, right? Uh, and, and how it goes in cycles. All right, so let's look at these family lines. Um, and we know uh, in the Bible, it says uh, when, when one man sins, his, uh, his family is cursed for three to four generations. Um, um, and so we know that uh, when there's a, a family line of sin, right? Like, so in some families, um, you know, uh, we see patterns of, uh, you know, um, alcoholism or addictions. Another family, we might see patterns of um, divorce. Another family line, we'll see a pattern of cancer. Or another one we will see of, well, let's pick some good things. Uh, you know, they're all doctors or they're all lawyers or, you know, um, uh, you know, or they're all a, a line of business people. You know, we see gener or family lines, there's traits that travel in family lines. And we know that curses um, uh, travel in family lines. So, um, so let's go um, up to here. Um, Jacob was actually, uh, God said, he renamed Jacob Israel um, to be the, the father of his people. The Israelites, right? So Jacob's descendants were God's chosen people. They were the ones, because, because of Jacob's repentance um, and, and character and leadership, he was chosen by God to lead his chosen people, the Israelites. Now, um, they're all Jews, by the way, right? Esau was a Jew. Jacob was a Jew. They're all Jews. But the Israelite uh, tribe, if you will, yeah, it's a tribe. Um, um, they were the chosen ones to teach the world about God's ways, right? Just like Noah was chosen to repopulate the world, uh, Jacob was chosen to um, teach the world about God um, because he was the most right righteous around. All right. So that left Esau at the, you know, the bum end of the deal, I guess you could say. Uh, um, I hope that's not offensive in your culture, <laughs> what I just said, but uh, the bottom end of the deal, if you will. Um, uh, but um, I, I think we all know the story of how Jacob and Esau continued to battle for power. Uh, uh, Jacob fought for, um, for uh, his birthright to come back to him, um, you know, by... Uh, when his father on his deathbed uh, couldn't see, and so Jacob put spur on his arms to be to, to so to, to appear like Esau. So when the father touched Jacob's arm, he would think it was Esau, and Jacob then stole the birthright. Um, I, I'm not going to get into detail of that, but I, I think everybody understands how Jacob Jacob kind of took back what was to be uh, supposed to be his birthright. All right, let's um, let's continue on. So the line of um, uh, uh, of, of Jacob. All right. Jacob had 12 sons. Let's just keep going here. Jacob had 12 sons and they became the 12 tribes of Israel, right? Um, there we go. So that's 12 tribes. Israel, right? So the 12 tribes of Israel, <laughs> right? And that's why the land is uh, Israel today is called the land of is called Israel. All right. So we have the 12, 12 tribes of Israel. And um, so we had 12 sons. These were righteous uh, sons. You know, uh, they were to, you know, lead the world. Everything was prosperous. Now um, let's keep going down the line. King Solomon comes in here uh, as a descendant of Israel or Jacob. All right. And King Solomon builds. Um, <clears throat> Uh, a, a wonderful, I don't know if, I'm not going to call it an empire, but a, uh, a kingdom, right? His kingdom, because he was a king. He built this wonderful kingdom. Everybody was wealthy. Everyone was uh, healthy. Uh, uh, everything ran like clockwork. Everybody knew what was expected of them. Everybody contributed to the kingdom. Everybody received from the kingdom. And people from all around, kings and queens from all around, came to King Solomon to say, what are you doing right? And he would say, well, I do everything that God tells me to. I do everything God's way, right? All right. So here we go. Uh, cycles. Then we have, uh, I want to see how much detail do I want to go into. I don't think I need to go into too much detail up here. I think everybody understands. Then we had 10 tribes. 
uh, uh, went into cap um, all the uh, tribes of Israel. They were taken into captivity by the Assyrians, the Egyptians, and the um, uh, Babylonians at different times. Uh, they were all taken away. So um, before that, we had 10 tribes in the north. We had two tribes in the south of, of, uh, of Israel. They were taken to, into captivity. Um, after captivity, when they were released, the two tribes of Judah from the south returned to Israel to rebuild their culture, to rebuild God's way, right? Uh, and the 10 tribes from the north were scattered all to the ends of the earth, uh, or like, and literally. <laughs> um, so they were, they moved, they went to Europe, they went all over Africa, they went to um, the Middle East, to Asia, and even some of them came across to North America and down into South America. And uh, so the remnant of those people are considered the lost tribes of Israel, which we're not going to get into, into detail today. All right. Actually, yeah, I'm going to, I'll bring that up after. Um, okay. Uh, now, here we have the line of Esau. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but now here we have a line of sin, right? Of, of bitterness, of anger. Um, you know, we could go into, uh, here's another family line. Um, uh, Ishmael, oops, where are they today? Uh, Ishmael, if you remember. Ishmael. Uh, Ishmael was the first uh, born son um, of Abraham and Sarah. Uh, remember, uh, God promised them many, many children, and they weren't having, they weren't conceiving, and they were like in a rush, like, we want to have children. So they arranged for uh, Abraham to sleep with um, uh, uh, Hagar, which was uh, Sarah's hand, or, like servant, and they uh, Hagar and Abraham conceived Ishmael. Um, and um, but then after that, uh, um, uh, um, I'm sorry, my brain is just it's escaping me. His name. Um, Joshua was born, who was to be the rightful heir. Anyways, Ishmael basically was pushed aside, right? He didn't get any of the birthright, uh, and he was kind of pushed aside. He and Hagar actually were uh, made to to leave uh, the kingdom of, uh, or not the kid, that wasn't a kingdom, but the, the tribe, Abraham's tribe. And so Ishmael became bitter. This is the start of, Ishmael is the founder or the start of the line of, um, can I add to this? Yes, of um, of Islam. Right, that's how Islam came to be—a bitter root, right, and uh, that directly uh, uh, opposes um, a righteous line, right, the the the, the line of God. Um, so that's the that you can see how this is how in the past we get to today uh, of of Islam, right. Um, uh, I could go into Nimrod. Uh, there's, you know, we can look at a number of different evil family lines or family lines where evil entered, uh, um, which basically was from rejection and, uh, and which resulted in bitterness and anger, which got passed down to family lines. All right. Now, I think, I think I've detailed that enough about let's just say good family lines, not that sin wasn't there, but, uh, you know, basically good family lines and evil family lines. All right. Now. Um, all right. Uh, Want to tie this into the present. This is the whole purpose. Um, so Ishmael resulted in Islam today. Esau, the Rothschilds and Rockefellers it, uh, they have tracked it back, but the Rothschilds and Rockefellers, there we go. I may have the spelling wrong on those, are re descendants of the line of Esau. The Rothschilds and the Rockefellers are the heads of um, the um, uh, world banking system, uh, the business mountain today, uh, like BlackRock, uh, Vanguard, um, uh, 
Yes, all the, the world banking system. They're big in the um, World Economic Forum. All remember the we talked about last week, all of those uh, big um, uh, businesses and governments uh, that own the tops of the uh, of the social mountains today. Oh, education, they own a lot of uh, universities. So you see where uh, evil from history is, is manifesting today. So this is how we get to where we are today. All right, uh, I think that's enough detail on that for now. Uh, okay, any questions? So before I open questions, uh, um, I'm just gonna add in here, just checking my notes and I see I missed something. Um, this is where, okay, um, how will I tie this in now? This is where um, um, like the origins of like uh, at some point in history here, I don't have timelines for you today, but the Vatican comes in. This is where the Jesuit priests come in. This is where dynasties come in, like especially the Asian dynasties. Um, this is where European royal families come in, uh, where Freemasonry comes in. That we th these are the origins here. The, the things I talked about last week. These evil family lines are where it all comes from, um, um, and it's so these seeds were planted a long, long time ago, where where it's unrepentant sin that has come through family lines and brought us to to where we are today. So so in other words, the Pope just didn't appear in our lifetime. That was started a long time ago. Um, Freemasonry, same thing, started a long time ago. Um, what are some other ones that I mentioned last week? Um, even the resulting businesses, like the world banking system, um, that was started, um, uh, the current world banking, oh goodness, I, I, I can't give you the, ex I, I'm not absolutely sure of the exact years that those started, but, um, uh, it was started by a bunch of Jewish people, Rothschilds and Rockefellers and some others that learned that uh, people needed, people would borrow money. And uh, if they borrowed money, uh, the Rothschilds and Rockefellers knew that they could invest in these people to start businesses, to, to do good things with. Um, and but they would charge interest and make money back from these people as as uh, back from their profits, which actually is really actually a good business deal. It's it's a good business deal. But what happened was the the uh, and I, not just the Rockefellers and Rothschilds, but others, Jewish families. Um, um, then they started ex charging exorbitant interest rates, uh, and that's where it fell into evil. Right. Uh, so a good thing turned into evil. All right, um, I think this is enough information uh, uh, for now to get the point across. So I'm just gonna open up for um, comments on anything from pa the past or anything actually. And then I'm just gonna, I'll close it up, kind of pull it together for where we are today, kind of relating the past to where we are today. All right, questions, comments. Is this new information for people or is this like, oh, I knew all this? Yeah, we've been aware of most of this for, for quite a while. Yeah, yeah, good. Awesome. Okay. So let's, um, yeah. Uh, next week, we're gonna talk about the future. Okay, how to, how to set up to the future. Uh, I think we can kind of forecast and foresee how building King Solomon Kingdom incubators fits in uh, based on the past and what's happening today. But um, uh, but we'll just we'll just we'll just run through that because it's important to understand, right? So be uh, you know uh, sharp as serp serpents and and uh, uh, gentle as doves is is we need to understand the situation, the time we're in. All right, and understand God's call of how to move in uh, in his time, in this season. All right. Um, 
All right. Let's pull this all together. I'm um all right. Part of this is going to be what I'm seeing, uh, just pulling the pieces of knowledge together. Um, but as hearing um, as a prophet of how God is uh, directing us to move forward, I'm kind of pulling it all together and, and saying, um, what I'm seeing today is um, obviously we're headed to another world war. I, 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 I think that's without a doubt where we're headed. It's historically, it's shown that's the way things go. Um, I think it's going to be, um, I think it's going to be fought primarily in sp strategic spots in the world. But let me pull in, let me pull in uh, a prophetic, was this a vision or a dream that I had, which I've said mentioned before, but I saw the globe, uh, the world, and I saw, um all the major cities so milan london uh paris la new york toronto vancouver rio de janeiro you know i saw them all in uh gray so it was like a bomb had hit them and uh there were ashes everywhere and there was smoke rising up um from these cities and they were all destroyed and uh, then I saw green patches all over the world. And uh, these green patches were, were places, they were in, in between, they were in rural areas and um, they were very prosperous. They were green because they had beautiful crops. Everything was lovely. They were like miniature Garden of Edens. And, um, and so we, um, um, uh, and I, I took a look, a closer look at them, and I just saw people prospering, laughing, running and playing. And then I saw uh, walls around each one of these um, green patches. Uh, and I saw that there were people that had, some had died, a lot, many, many, many had died in these big cities, in, in whatever went down there. And um, uh, people uh, were wandering in the in the gray areas, like fr from the gray cities, but in that, uh, how to put it, the spaces in between the cities and the green patches. And they were wandering, they're trying to find food, they're trying to find fuel, uh, they were just trying to survive. And, um, you know, uh, and they would do anything to get it, like they would kill to get food. Um, it was really a wasteland. And, um, and so that's why we needed to protect the green space patches uh because and be mindful of who we allow in to our uh what the green patches are king solomon kingdom incubators that kind of evolved from that vision and dream um so um where's i going with with that is um the the war that that's coming um I'm not sure that the actual cities will be bombed. I'm not sure if it's that. I I, I believe that it's the, all the infrastructure, like the ed current education systems, the current business systems, the current governments, uh, the banking systems, um, everything, uh, all of these those systems are located in the big cities, right? That's where all the headquarters, head offices are. It's where all the government buildings are, right? Um, uh, that basically, it's not that they're going to be bombed, uh, like literally, it's that they're going to be just, um, ex the evil will be exposed and destroyed, and there'll be nothing left. Um, and I, I believe this is why, um, uh, you know, all our governments are promoting everyone to move to the cities, move to the city to get jobs, move to the city to get housing, move to the city to get any kind of safety and security and protection and opportunity, right? Um, they don't want people in the rural areas. And that's why we need to go to the rural areas to get out of the control of the governments. And um, so um, um, th that's how I'm, I'm seeing it will go down, you know? So it's even the internet being gone, um, uh, communication systems being gone. Um, yeah, all right. So I, where do I want to check my notes here again? Um, I also see that a lot, 
is I'm, I'm, I really believe what God says. I believe what he says is true. And when he says I'm taking down the evil on all the social mountains, I believe he, I see it. We see the evidence of it now already. Governments are falling. Sri Lanka is, is, is the government is gone. Uh, uh, the Italian president uh, was forced to resign. The British president was forced to resign. Uh, Canada, France, and Australia are uh, in the middle of being forced to resign. Um, uh, um, we're seeing that God is exposing the evil and taking it down. Where do I want to go with that? Um, I want to. I want to finish with just uh, not the doom and gloom. I want to finish with and just say next week. We're going to talk about, um, 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 we're just taking all this in, studying what's happening right now, understanding what's happening right now, um, and how that fits in with the patterns of the past so that we can set ourselves up for, for, for pros not just survival, but prosperity in the future. And I mean it. I mean prosperity like we've never experienced before. I'm talking... I'm talking, I'm prophesying now, I'm talking promised land prosperity, where the grapes are so big, it takes two men and a pole to carry one bunch. I'm talking um, like we've never seen before. And, and many prophets are saying this today. And, and this is kind of a, a, a let's just reconcile. Uh, we know end times, we know we're in it. We know we're, and we know how things are going to go. The Bible tells us how it's going to go. And we're seeing the patterns. It's making sense now, right? Um, but then some prophets are saying, we're going to be so blessed beyond our wildest imaginations, wealth beyond like anything that's ever happened before. And we're like, what? They're, they're dichot like they're opposite. Like what? One of you guys, some of you, you know, the ones that are on this camp and the one that are on this camp, um, you know, one of them's wrong. Right. But here's what, how I'm, I'm seeing it is that both will exist at the same time. Right. Is that there will be destruction of all evil, but God has given us the plan, the blueprint of how to thrive, right? Not just how to, but um, um, uh, but but a, but but He's giving us a pathway. Um, yeah. So uh, that's that's my take on it. So um, uh, we'll continue on with that. I wanted to finish on that high note to us to have to to, to have hope and have. Um, a purpose and um, to be at peace and even at joy in these times, right? And that we're not focused on what the, and we're not glorifying what the enemy is doing. We're focused and we're glorifying what God is doing. So I'm, as I'm saying this, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I want to speak this over us. Let us not be discouraged. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Any, and any comments? A prophet we were listening to um, several years ago who has ne now passed away, he used to say all the time, it'll be the, the best of times and it'll be the worst of times coinciding together. There will be cities of light, um, which will be different from the cities that we presently have. He said that all the cities in the world will be destroyed and that there will be these cities of light that will literally live under the domes of God's presence and glory. So, so much of what you say, Kate, he, he, he spoke of, and God had us listen to him for about three or four years before he passed away, passed on. And, um, it, yeah, it's just, everything you say is, is so confirming of what, what he already taught. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for that. I want to open. I want. To, I want to have a conversation now. Like, uh, like, uh, let's just have a conversation now. Because here's. Let me just. Let me just share my heart. Okay. I see these things. I hear these things from God, and I think. You know, it's so way out there. <laughs> you know, it's so weird. It's so like you know. I. It just. It's so big right and that even i'm like uh overwhelmed by it like how on earth are we going to do all this like this is way beyond my <laughs> capability what like i i, <laughs> I didn't study political science and you're like uh, <laughs> you're like 
oh my goodness, God, this is so much, right? And and um, so I listened to a lot of prophets. Uh, well, no, sorry, a lot, uh, specific ones. Uh, uh, actually, I think, Heidi, you and I listened to a lot of the same prophets, but um, I wasn't aware of this prophet that you were talking about. So when I hear things like this, it's like, oh, thank you for that affirmation, God. We're on the right direction, right? Um, uh um, so I, I, I like the dialogue. That's what I'd like us to do is keep dialoguing, comparing notes, um, bringing our pieces of the puzzle, right? So Heidi, you carry certain pieces of the puzzle. puzzle. Even Ray, I mean, although you and Raymer are one, but you even together, you each carry pieces of the puzzle and each one of your five children carry pieces of the puzzle. And then Ephraim, you know, carries pieces of the puzzle and Frehi Watt carries pieces, like, this is the come to the table approach, right? <laughs> Everyone has pieces of the puzzle. And um, um, uh, I never want us to get into the um, mindset, for example, that I have all the answers. Like I, I wanna see, and, and soon we will have that is more people doing teachings on specific aspects, right? Um, so like, um, uh, you know, so now, uh, the the Demesas uh, uh, have agreed to start building uh, um, uh, educa an educa education library for the farming mountain, right? Uh, and more and more people will be building um, educational pieces and libraries for each of the 14 mountains that we can all share. That's the whole nature of Hased. It's a round table. We all come together, right? So, um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for sharing that, uh, that Heidi. Yeah, because it's important that we are on the right track, right? Without being afraid of failure, like it's okay to make a mistake and get back on the track. That's totally fine. Um, but um, we need to keep dialoguing. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Any other, um, Ephraim, what are your thoughts? I know Things are very different in Africa. Um, yeah. yeah. Very different. We live in the same world, but <laughs> Africa is different than the rest of the world. And all those things and uh, signs that we see now is happening, you know, all the, the signs of last times end times signs are already fulfilled mm. so whatever you say this is really makes sense for me because we have seen it in our own eyes in our own bay i see you know we see happening though we are we have different issues different challenges what we face in africa but the signs that are happening now is all over the world we can see it we can sense it and it has a, a truly truth and we have to face it mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's a good point i love i love what you said at the very beginning you said we live in the same world but we have different uh, we're in different places right different social social situations Challenge. economic situations and so on yeah that was very that was that was wise um you know, I had a conversation with uh, with Francis in he's in the DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, and uh, uh, I've never been there myself, uh, but uh, he describes it, you know, it's uh, uh, not very advanced, um, you know, they'll go weeks without electricity, um, and uh, so some bigger churches have generators, so they go to, you know, charge up phones and stuff like that, and uh, internet is uh, um, inconsistent and just it's uh, a lot of countries in Africa particularly are in survival mode it's just hand to mouth like so thinking about the world situation the way it is right now is like you know what like I don't care like I don't care I just need to feed my kids today like that's the, the real the reality of, of of much of Africa not all of it um, and so I think this is a prayer. We'll, we'll pray this today. So uh, whoever feels led to pray this, this is the direction that I'm going with it is um, that, 
Oh, here I am getting, I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, this is going to be part of the future <laughs> for next week. And Africa is a huge part of it. Um, uh, it was a prophecy I got in March of 2018 or 19. And um, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to blow it. I want to save it for next week because it's a really good ending. Uh, or no, well, yeah, it literally is an ending. But um, anyway, um, somehow we need to find a way. We need to pray that there's an awakening in Africa because um, Africa is going to be a powerful, and I believe based on this prophecy, uh, the most powerful continent in the world. And I'll explain more why next week. <laughs> but um, so we need to pray for an awakening in Africa that despite the main concern is just, I, I want to feed my kids today. I want my kids to live beyond the age of 12 years old. I, I want, I, I, you know, I, I don't want AIDS to hit my family, you know, like these real like life and death situations that they live every single day. Um, that there's an awakening that goes beyond that just existence and survival that goes, that can take them into prosperity. You know what I mean? Uh, because I believe they're to lead the way for prosperity. I believe that that's, I believe that. So um, that, that's a prayer item. There's an awakening in Africa. And I feel there was one gentleman in Africa. I uh, can't remember which country. I can't remember. <coughs> Actually, I don't even know what country he's from. Um, I've never met him. I was part of a, um, uh, international prayer group that he was in and a lot of times Africans don't do don't share their screen so you can't see their faces because it takes up le less bandwidth uh, they get a better connection and so I never saw this gentleman's face he was only in one meeting uh, and these were weekly meetings he was only ever in one that I was in and and so randomly months later he messaged me and said I've been praying about you and um, God says, you have a message for the nations. And it just sent my heart into shockwaves because he, God's been speaking to me the same thing. But I'm like, God, how do we get this message out? <laughs> how do we, how do I, I speak it and it lands in the ears in, in Africa or all the nations? Like, how is that going to happen? And um, so how do we get the message to Africans that most of them do not even have a device? They don't have internet. They don't have television. Um, how do we get the message? <laughs> out? How do we bring awakening to Africa? Um, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll leave it there. Who, who wants to pray for that? Who <clears throat> <clears throat> Well, I feel it, maybe I think I'll pray because I feel that in my heart, that that's my cry. My heart cry is for the most vulnerable people of the world, right? And particularly the children. Um, God, I just ask you to find a way for the message to get to every person in the world. Yes, the message of the good news of Jesus and the good news of salvation. Yes, that. But it goes, and it's not that that's not enough. That is enough. <laughs> but further, the message of Hesed, the message of, of, of living in a King Solomon Kingdom incubator, of building a King Solomon Kingdom incubator, a message that, yes, you can, because God lives in you, right? And, 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 and his strength gives you strength. The message that it doesn't matter how poor you are. It doesn't matter if you're a girl or a boy. It doesn't matter if you're five or you're, um, you know, 50. It doesn't matter, you know, but that God will make a way. No matter how impossible the situation is, you can do it, right? So I'm speaking that 
And God, you say, you say that our words can move a mountain. So where I'm asking the question, how do we get the message to Af all these African people that don't have internet or televisions or any, we, we have no way to reach them that we think. Um, and even the First Nations people of Canada, God, particularly the children, we ask you to weigh out, to take the message of Hesed, of love, of King Solomon Kingdom Incubators, take the message to them, deliver it to them supernaturally, lay it on their hearts, bring it to their eyes and, in visions, bring it to their, their minds in dreams, bring it to their ears um, through your audible voice, through your messengers, God. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is the right prayer for right now. He's really happy with this prayer. Yeah. So God, we just ask you to, to grow and expand the community, the movement of Hesed International. Uh, that we would come together, intercultural, multicultural, cross-cultural, that we would, I see, I hear the word band together, come together as a band, a band, band, what does that mean? Band is bind, bind us together. <laughs> with your has said love, bind us together, God, find ways of reaching everyone. God, you say you leave the 99 to go for the one. We're asking that God, where are the ones? Take this message, take my voice right now and carry it to their ears, carry it to their hearts, God. And I just ask you, God, as these like lines of communication go out supernaturally, that you kind of Pull them tighter, like, like a fisherman pulls the line, <laughs> pulls the line in that you would draw us together. Um, no matter where we are, that you would bring us together somehow. Mm. Yeah. We thank you, God. Thank you, God for what you're doing. We thank you that even though we live in these, this right now, this perfect storm of a, of a, we're in the middle of a dispensation and uh, a changeover in uh, worldly superpowers, na national superpowers. Um, God, that you make a way for us, that even though we walk uh, through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil. You've given us a way. So we thank you, God. We thank you, God. We just, we ask for the finances to be able to carry this out. This is going to take trillions of dollars. Like, is there something beyond trillions? <laughs> like, whatever is the next monetary value of trillions, we need that much, God, to develop this. So we're just asking for a download of all the finances we need to do this. And the right wise leaders to uh, to to lead. Yeah. Yeah, I feel joy in my heart, gods, and I feel that you're you're. I feel your joy, and I feel your joy in my heart right now, God. So we just bless you, God. We bless you uh, with dreams and visions and more details for the blueprint. Um, we bless you with joy, God. We're, it's a blessing for us to bring you joy. It really is, God. Uh, we are your faithful servants, your children. We're just here to carry out the mission you have for us. We submit ourselves, sweetly submit ourselves to you in service to you to carry out your plan. It doesn't matter how hard. Um, we just submit and we say yes and amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. We just pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody want to add? Just while you're praying, I, I just had like a picture of your prayer, your one prayer <laughs> going up to the Father and him catching it in his hand and having it in his open hand. And then he took it. And he went, oh. and, and when 
when you are a single plant, just a single plant has many, many, many seeds. Mm. And those seeds were just scattered. And, and we're thinking in our minds, how are you going to do this, Lord? Yeah. But it's, it's through prayer. It's God that does it. And, and our, our prayers have, have power, right? right? So I think those many, many seeds he's scattering and it's, it's going to do it. I mean, there's much more to it than just a prayer, but that's the beginning and that's what's happening. So. Wow. That's powerful. (laughs) I felt that when you were saying that, that was powerful. That is powerful. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yes. Yeah. Guys, let's just continue to pray that very prayer that very prayer that he would plant those seeds and draw in the people, right? Draw in the people. Um, you know, some of our calls, there's not many people on. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I say, that is totally fine. That is totally <laughs> fine because it just needs to start. We need to start speaking. We need to start taking action, right? Um, that's it, that we just keep doing that and God sends those seeds. So, uh, yeah. Yes, we'll look back a year from now on today and we'll yeah. laugh. Yes. <laughs> right? We'll laugh. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Um, My goodness. Wow. Wow. Well, thank you so much, guys. Just even presence, right, is so valuable. Presence, like being in the presence of other greatness <laughs> is you know, it's such a blessing. Uh, it's a blessing for me. Uh, so just uh, thank you guys. I just, I'm blessed to know you, blessed to work with you. Uh, I just, uh, I just thank you. And I thank God for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. You too, Kate. We really appreciate all the work that you put into this and not, not only the work and the research and the teaching, but just how you're able to um present it it just it, it blows my mind <laughs> it's it's i'm not trying to i'm not trying to puff you up i i hope you hear my heart i just i think it's incredible already what god has done and and is doing that i there's not a lot of people that could present what you're presenting so much information and how it's put together and it's so easy to understand the girls are listening to you every week. They're trying to catch up on your, on the has said meetings and they're getting, they're getting a lot from it. And we're having family discussions and you present it in, in such a way that a child, even a child can understand it. And that is kingdom right there. Um, so we just, we're just really appreciative to God, you know, for, for all of us. So praise the Lord. Yeah, thank you for thank you for saying that. Yeah, because I'm I'm constantly questioning like, how am I going to say this? What's the best way to, <laughs> to to summarize it and keep it concise but accurate? <laughs> I'm constantly it's a constant thing, um, and uh, I, but I I thank God because honestly, sometimes I just start out with concepts and. Um, God, as I'm talking about it, he just takes it and, uh, and adds like, just kind of puts fuel on the fire, I guess you could say. Yeah, it, that's exactly what happens. Like, for example, today, when I, I hadn't planned to put one on top of the other, like the dispensations and then the world, uh, like nation or uh, em- empirical powers and uh, compare that perfect storm, right, of where we're at right now. Uh, I hadn't planned to do that, but he, he gave me those words as we were going. So, mm. um, so, you know, all glory to God for, for that. Um, and it, for me, it, um, if you think of it as a roller coaster, you, you can, you can kind of see what's coming, but you have no idea how it's going to feel when you're on the way down or around the corner or whatever. It's kind of how it is, uh, which is, it's kind of fun, but, um, Yeah. So, but thank you for that feedback because that really helps me. That like, I think we all need encouragement. Um, 
uh, yeah, we, and uh, like we all do, right? Uh, just because I'm the one kind of delivering stuff at this point in time, um, it doesn't mean I know everything. <laughs> So the encouragement really is helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I love that children are able to get it. I love, I hadn't considered that. I love that. Yes. So important. Yeah. That's so important. Yeah. And the kids always remember to pray for his head mm -hmm. as well for you. Wow. So that's, I think that's really neat that obviously God's putting it on their hearts. I mean, they see, they see that we think it's important. But yeah, you know, they're coming out and, and bringing it up themselves as well. So I think, you know, approaching approaching everything that you said today and our future, um, we have to become more childlike. We have to come to that place where we just we have no fear of what is coming our way. And we approach all of this childlike, like how, how will we ever do this? Well, my daddy's big. My daddy's bigger than your daddy. <laughs> and he's yeah. going to do, it. he's going to do it. And uh, because I don't think we can, I remember Neville saying so often, you're, you know, you're going to have to really live and dwell in the presence of God and only the childlike can approach him. And and he said, in order to make it through what's coming. Yeah. And there's a, there's a real soberness to that. I don't think we have to label it doom and gloom. I think, I think, you know, <laughs> the times we're living in are sobering, <laughs> right? Yeah. But if we, um, if we humble ourselves and become childlike, it, but still with the tenacity and the audacity of a child, you know what I mean? Yeah because there's a there's a there's a humility even in that um he's he's going to keep us he's going to keep us he's going to take us through just like a faithful father would yeah so there's something about there's definitely something about the kids there's something big yeah. <laughs> something big about them. yeah amen to everything you said amen 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 to everything yeah and it's i mean i love being around your kids um I'm not around kids a lot, right? Um, I, I'm around God a lot right now. Um, um, but um, so it's such a blessing to be around kids. And I love kids, right? I love I love teaching and mentoring and encouraging kids. Like, I just love it. So it's like, uh, yeah, being around your kids is really special to me. So um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. My goodness, God's doing so much. I wish I could keep up with it all. But anyways, <laughs> wow. Well, awesome. Thanks so much, guys, for today. This was such a blessing for me. I hope it was a blessing for you and for everybody watching the video recording. You know, even if it's tonight or 10 years from now, uh, I hope it's a blessing. So uh, uh, we'll see you guys again. Hopefully, don't forget Saturdays uh, for worship which is evolved, that's intended to be the discipleship mountain on a global level. That's what that's developing into be, right? Um, so that's all about establishing, hi Nate. Um, <laughs> that's all about establishing um, the, the discipleship mountain culture. That's about the prophetic apostolic culture, the supernatural culture, the heavenly culture. That's all what that's about to, for to develop. So, and I would love, more people speaking like if, if someone has a message that's you know in that line uh in that vein uh, of uh of, of worship please let me know uh and um uh and we'll get you in because I, I again i don't want to be the only one speaking <laughs> awesome okay. awesome well, we'll see you guys next week or well hopefully saturday we'll see you saturday yeah uh -huh. Bye. Bye, Nate. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye. 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 bye.